Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. Thank you for joining me this week. I really appreciate your support for these 11 years. And I I really appreciate you. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Just be in this time together. And Lord God, help me serve up a meal to feed them not only for a week, but for, for the rest of their lives, Lord. You're, you're the cook. I'm just the waiter. Lord God, I just pray that you use me to your advantage, oh God. Um, speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, guys. Um, I was thinking this week about um, everyday angels. A friend was telling me about someone she heard 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 of in a um, in a very um, horrible situation, and as as she was talking to me, I said the this I said I said to after my, after my friend left my apartment. I said, I said to, I said to God, I said, give her angels, and I used a word, and I can't remember, um, what that word, what that initial word was, but as I was thinking about, uh, uh, this person, my friend knows, going through a very difficult situation, I'm like, Lord, send her, send her angels to help her in this situation. And I used a word, I can't even remember if it was secret or avenging or whatever. But uh, going through my weeks, going through my week, I couldn't remember that word. But the Lord said to call this sermon Everyday Angels. So that's what I'm calling this sermon, Everyday Angels. It's about the people, when we think of, uh, it's, go, it's going to be about the people that we see every day that affect our lives in positive ways and we don't even realize it. Our everyday um, police officers, firefighters, doctors, our every everyday people like that who put their lives on the line, nurses. When we used to when we used to say frontline workers, we used to mean just police and firefighters. But since COVID. Um, health workers are added to that too because uh, they put their lives on the line every day. And the Lord said, said very clearly to me, tell them to watch for the everyday angels, which means the people in your life every day that make your life happen. Um, I live in a... Um, a, t um, a facility with attendant care, although it's my own apartments. I have people that come to me every day to help me get up, to help me do my daily needs. They're my everyday angels. Um, like the people that come and help me every day. The people that get up at four in the morning to be here. Just so I can get up out of bed, and I'm thankful for those people every day. And I make sure to say thank you every day when they come to do what they have to do. Uh, the fact that they get paid to do that is is not even a question for me, because to me, they can. They could pick any job in the world. People get paid for everything. But the fact that they picked a job that um, 
is that like they have to sacrifice so much in the snow, in the ice storm, in the rainstorm, whatever is going on in their personal life. Some of them have two jobs, some of them, most of them have families, but they still manage to be here for me, and for that I'm grateful. So they're my everyday angels. Uh, the, the people that help me every day, and the Lord said, uh, there needs to be a spirit of gratitude. See, we, we, we sometimes take people for granted, uh, that he gives us, and we're, we're waiting for the big moments, but the big moments begin with the little steps. I'll say that again. The big moments begin with the little steps, and if you can't be grateful for the um, so-called inconsequential people in your life, how is God going to give you more? And I was talking to the Lord the other day, and he says, um, he said, if you can't be grateful for what you have right now, for the people you have in your life right now, what makes you think I'm going to give you more? Like, we're always, like, as human beings, I believe, we're always waiting for more, and he's... He's waiting for us to be grateful for what we have. Not that we can't strive for more, but in in our striving, let us not forget to be grateful for the people that God has already put in our lives. And there's always uh, somebody. Uh, when I... When... When I did my COVID video, I talked about not only the ladies that work here, but I talked about my my sisters and my family members who were there for me, who who toiled for me, who prayed for me when I was in that uh, sticky situation and when I was struggling with COVID. Um, it's a few videos back. You can find it if you look on my Facebook page or my channel. And that whole experience t taught me to really appreciate the people inside, um, um, inside my life who really help it run. And if you can't appreciate the uh, little peak like the so-called little people in your life, what, 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 what makes you think God is going to give you more? Like, because we always want the next best thing and the next best thing, but what we don't realize is the next best thing starts with appreciating what you have. You can. You can strive for more, but still appreciate what you have. Like, we, we often think it's either or, but it isn't. You can strive for more, but still appreciate what you have. And the people God has put in your life. I was so frustrated the other day, because, not the other day, but a few years ago. Um, I was uh, at a college and um, I saw uh, the head of the college talk to a custodian really rudely and I could tell he was the head of the college because although I hadn't personally met him, I, um, I knew he was the head of the college because of the picture in the in the front hall. And as I sat there and saw the head of this college, it wasn't the college that I went to. It was another college because of my, my uh, I happened to be there um, for some, for some reason. 
and um, I saw this this man talk to this custodian like they were just dirt on his shoe. And I thought, wow, like, like, how could you do that? How could you talk to somebody who works for you like that? Um, I think Pink said it, said it best. She said, if you treat people right, they won't want to, want to, want to leave. She said, uh, uh, she said, I've had people with me for 10 years because I respect them and I treat them right. And she said, I have all kinds of people working for me. I have black people, I have straight people, I have gay people, I have, I have all these kind of people waiting for me because I treat them with respect. And some, and, and sometimes... We tend to forget the people that we think can't give us anything. So we kind of treat them like, oh, he's just a waitress, or or he's just a server, or she's just a server, or she just takes my ticket at, at or uh, TTC or whatever. We don't take tickets anymore. I'm old school. But you know what I mean? Um, but, like, the people that serve you in so-called service jobs, whether it be custodians, whether it be a um, sanitation worker, whether it be a cleaner at a hotel, those people literally have the hardest jobs ever and they need to be celebrated because they have it's back breaking work cleaning a hotel room especially when people are not grateful and they treat you like you're the dirt on their shoe but what those people don't realize is how you treat the least of these is how you'll be treated so if you treat the least of these like there's some dirt on your shoe and you treat the CEO like, oh, you're the, you're the king of everything. You're the king or queen of everything. Um, it'll come back to you because uh, remember this. God is no respecter of persons. And if if we are like Christ, we we ought to be no respecter of persons either. Uh, what I mean by respecter of person is like we don't care who you are. Uh, we treat you the same way. So I always try and notice the people that nobody else notices, that everyone else walks past, like. Like the cleaners that that clean, or or the attendants that get me up, or um, the the people that are that uh, drop off my mail, or the people begging my groceries. I always try and say hello to them, and and treat them with respect, because the more I treat them with respect. The more I I treat them with dignity and kindness, is the more I'll get out of it. As treating people with kindness is as much for me as it is for them. And God's so funny. God watches how you treat everyone, how you are with everyone. Do you treat everyone, even people you don't agree with, do you treat them with respect and love and kindness and care and compassion? We, we tend to walk past people on the street when, they, when we think uh, they can't give us anything, so 
they don't matter, but you have to understand that every single person, every single person comes from God. Every single person is is a child of the king, but some people don't know know it. Like, cause some people say that to be to, to become a child of God, you need to uh, get saved and accept Jesus. No, no. I believe that everyone is a child of God, but some people don't know it, and they haven't received Him yet. They haven't received their status yet. It's like um, somebody being born somewhere, but they they don't know that they were born in that particular place, so they don't have the benefits. But they they are still that person. That's what I believe anyway. And I think that when you when you are just kind and human to everyone, I believe that shows to God that you are ready to handle what He wants for you on the next level. We are also busy striving to imp impress people and to uh, get somewhere that we we forget to appreciate and value what we what we need to uh, for right, right now and I think that when we appreciate and value the people and places that you are, where you are right now uh, it proves to God that you're mature enough to handle more it proves to God that you understand that all people are valuable. It doesn't matter who they are. And I, I, um, it's just so, it's just so funny. I, I, I can't tell you how many times that people have walked past me because they, they think, or they just flippantly say, Hi, Rachel, and they, they walk past me to another person who, um, who they think can give them more, and they don't even stop to talk to me. And it kind of says to me that they think certain people have value and certain people don't. And I think in the church especially, this happens uh, with people uh, with disabilities sometimes where we just walk past them. We don't, we don't really want to know who they are. We don't really talk to their care workers if they're nonverbal. We don't really talk to them if they're verbal. We just, uh, like, go past them without even understanding that they're people too, just like you. Like, and even with the homeless people, I know I'm guilty of it too because it's society telling us, oh, that all, all they want is drugs or they're dangerous, and yes, I know that some of them are dangerous, but some of them are just in the, they end, they made some decisions or maybe to no fault of their own, they ended up in, in a sticky place or they ended up in a place where they lost their home. And I think that the Lord is calling us to celebrate the everyday people in our lives and to look at all people as his children. Although some of those people don't know that they haven't received 
his salvation yet, but but they should still be treated with respect and love. And I think it's so awesome when you think about uh, people and the differences of people. When you stop and look at people that you haven't talked to before, or a populace of people who you haven't um, socialized with, you gain a broader perspective. And the Lord is calling for the church to gain a broader perspective. When I look at Jesus and his ministry and how he operated, the way we do church and the way we do ministry is not the way Jesus did church and ministry. I don't even know where we got um, what we do. Like, because um, Jesus di didn't sit in the building. He didn't have a board. He didn't have uh, associate pastors or campus pastors. He didn't even have buildings. He hated and he despised anything like that. He didn't sit in the synagogue. He went out and socialized with people. He went out and talked to people one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes he would have big gatherings of people that just followed him. He didn't have to send out invitations. He didn't have Instagram. He didn't have Facebook. People just came. And I think that we're just so screwed up in, in the body of Christ, thinking that we have to have all this stuff. But, but what we are missing, church, is the, the people that God loves. We walk past the people that God loves because we want a bigger church or or we want this number, we want that, that number in our church. But it's like, what are numbers? Numbers are just like tallies. But are those people's lives any better? Are you influencing those people's lives? It's great to say, oh, uh... A hundred people received the Lord, or whatever, or five million, or five thousand people received the Lord this year. That's all great to say, but are you in the trenches with those people, or are you putting things in place as a pastor, or leader, or um, minister, or bishop? to make sure that those people have what they need, or is it just a number? Like, I just long for the day that we would just, um, we would just as a church want to get to know people, not to get our church numbers up, or, or to let people think that our church is something but just to make their lives better, to, to make sure they have uh, food to feed their kids, to make sure that there are resources for them to find jobs, to make sure that they're okay. And that's part of shepherding. That is part of shepherding. All of, all of the stuff we do with the big lights and uh, church things and buildings and stuff, that, that all came later. That didn't come with Jesus. That came, uh, from the church fathers later. Like, that, even the thing about standing behind a pulpit, that came later. Um, that came later, and that was... Uh, well, it's debatable, but I think it was to show people that uh, the leaders were better than them. But that was, 
that may not be true. Forgive me if it isn't true, but I think that's what it was. Uh, but, see, what I'm trying to say is, I'm asking myself seri uh, seriously scary questions. I'm like, I say, I said, God, are what we doing? Are what we doing as a church? Are all the stuff we're doing as a church really you? Or is it, is it because what we've been taught to do as church? I said, Lord, do you want us to create a new normal or a new templ template as the BOC? And, and what, what do you want this new template to look like? I'm, I'm just looking around at the church and going, what the heck are we doing? And I, and I look at the scriptures and I look at how Jesus um, was actually with people, actually loved people, actually cared about people, met people where they were, and it was because of his spirit, his personality, his kindness, and his compassion that people flocked to him. He didn't have to do an Instagram video. He didn't have to send people on a donkey to say, oh, Jesus is here. People flock to him. Because what I always say is, people know what speaks to them. That's why I rarely say, oh, share this, ex share this uh, sermon or make sure you share, like, subscribe. Because I trust that you know what speaks to you and you know how to get the word out for for something you want to you 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 want to share i don't have to say anything about that if you want to share it you know how to share it like i don't need to say anything because what what God is in, he'll provide for. And I don't need to say anything because you're capable people. You know exactly what to do. You know if I'm putting it on a public platform and that platform gives you the ability to share, you can share it. You can like it. You can subscribe. I don't need to say Oh, subscribe to me, subscribe to me, because, because at the end of the day, it's God that's in this thing, it's God that does all this, not me, and you know, when you like a video that, um, how to share it. You share every other music video or whatever. So you know how to do that. So when some when something touches people's hearts, I believe this is just my opinion. You don't need to say anything. They'll just it'll go like wildfire. When when an awful video of some celebrity goes viral, you don't need to tell people Oh, share this video. They do it anyway. Like, so, my feeling is, you don't need to share, you don't need to, get, like, I don't think churches need to uh, constantly remind people, whatever. People are, are smart. They know what, what touches their hearts, what touches their soul. I think what we need to do more of is reaching, um, you know, just being with people without the, all the um, bells and whistles of, of stuff. And I think we need to um, focus on the people that are there with us through our lives. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on a tangent. And I don't even know what that's about, but that may be for a pastor, whatever. 
Um, but I'm saying just everyday people that come into your life, life, um, be grateful for them. Um, um, there are, there are people that we miss in our own families that we're not grateful for. We, we get so hyped up over a celebrity or whatever that comes and we miss our mother and our father that are there with us every day or our sisters or brothers or nieces or nephews that are there with us every day. And I'm not saying we shouldn't appreciate when a guest comes, but we should appreciate our our pastors, our leaders that God has given us every day, the everyday people that feed us and teach us and all of that. And we don't have to wait for some celebrity to come from some other organization or for, from some church. We need to sort of appreciate aiding the leaders that God has put in our lives. And I know there are bad leaders, but there are more, there are more good church leaders than bad, and we need to start appreciating that. Because it is so hard, especially now, uh, to be a pastor, uh, to be a worship leader, to be a church leader of any kind, and the sacrifices that they that they give, give up are so great, and we only think they preach it on Sunday, but I, I'm telling you, because I've seen it in the churches I've been to, these people, they toil, they 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 give up unimaginable things just to make sure we have the word of God. So let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate the everyday people that influence our lives. And I think that when you appreciate the people that influence your life, that are in your life, not only does gratitude open your eyes, but gratitude expands your, expands your lens to see past yourself and past your needs. And I think um, the world at large needs to come out of their little areas and just expand their lens. I have a challenge for you. Um, See today to, um, today, um, make friends or talk to someone that is from a different, either culture than you, sexual orientation than you, or, um, political party than you. Talk to, talk, talk to someone different than you. Step outside of that comfort zone and really talk to them and get to know them. And you'll see how much your world expands and you'll see how much your view expands. And the Lord will begin to give you his re re revelation. Well, the Lord wants me to say, You've been praying for revelation about the world and what's going on. He's saying right now, he's saying revelation comes through relationship. Revelation comes through relationship. He, not only does he want a relationship with you, but he wants you to have relationship with people outside your scope of influence, influence even non-Christian people and um, not just to try and get them saved as, as a mission, but just them as people. What I admire about Jesus is he, 
he talked to people as people first. And then when he developed relationships, that's when he um, brought in the fact that he was the son of God. He didn't just hand them um, back in the day. It was a trap. Now it would be like a, a social media post and say, hey, join me on church or whatever. He developed the, a relationship with that person. Uh, I find that we are really struggling as a community relationally. We don't know how uh, to communicate relationally. So, social media is awesome, but it stunted our relational growth. And I pray that our relational growth, our ability to communicate with each other will come back. I love my computer. I'm on my computer all the time. But I think that it's time that we learn to communicate and talk with each other. So many problems would be solved if we learn to communicate and talk with each other every day. Um, if we set aside uh, time for families to talk, if we set aside time spouses to talk. I think it's so important um, that that we talk to each other every every day. Things happen, detrimental things, catastrophic things when people don't talk. And I think when you talk, when you communicate, not just talk, because communication is different than talking. Communication. It's con con conveying a message in which the other person can understand you. That's communication. Talking is just saying words, but communication is conveying a message, either physically, verbally, emotionally, and all, all that. So we are communicating. But how are we communicating with the everyday people in our lives? Um, are we com communicating in a positive way or a negative way? And I pray that the Lord today open up the lines of communication with every with our everyday people, like and just open up conversation where we can converse together. Because when you converse together, you understand and learn more about the person. And uh, you understand that the person um, has more in common with you than you, than you would have thought. Because, uh, oh, Outwardly, you may be different, but inside, you may you may have some commonality that unless you communicate, you don't know. So I'm praying that through this sermon, the Lord open up the lines of communication with everyday people, between everyday people. First of all, the everyday people in our lives, like our mothers, our fathers, our children, our spouses. I think that um, sometimes I think uh, mothers and daughters and fathers and sons just need to talk. I, I know I don't have any children, but I can... I can tell you from being a teen and from being a child that communication is not just yelling at your children when they're in trouble or chastising them when they're in trouble. It's basically just communicating with them on, the, on an everyday basis. It's communicating with them on an everyday basis and you you might say, well, I try, but he doesn't talk to me, or 
I try to communicate with them, but they don't talk to me. Well, um, communication doesn't start with them. It starts with you, you being vulnerable, you being um, willing to talk. So if if you if you if you say um, and ask an open-ended question, not a yes or no or one-word answer question. So instead of saying how was your day and they say fine, say start by talking about your day. Say you know I. I went into the office today, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. And then you could say, well, and and then, then you can leave it open-ended so that they can talk, they can say, well, I went into, I went into school today, and this happened, and this happened. Happen. And even if they don't communicate right away, uh, you can leave the lines of communication to talk about anything. Like, like you start first. So communication starts with you. It doesn't start with the other person. So you be vulnerable enough to tell them about your day and eventually they'll be telling you about your theirs because um, people don't like being asked those questions unless they know they can be vulnerable too and what communication requires is safety and I think a lot of people a lot of married couples a lot of children, a lot of, like, you know, other, like, a lot of people do not feel safe enough with communication to talk to you. So, if you ask, if you're vulnerable and you, and they, and you can trust them, and they'll be able to trust you back. If they can see that you trust them with being vulnerable, eventually they'll trust you back. And when you get that trust, do not break it. Because I know sometimes, especially with uh, uh, parents and children, it's so easy because uh, parents uh, love to talk about their kids. But especially when their kids become teenagers, you have to be very careful. Even non-teenagers have to be very careful about um, who they talk to. Because real genuine communication requires safety. I'll say that again. Real genuine communication requires safety and remember communication is um, a message being conveyed verbally physically emotionally whatever uh, but real verbal communication requires safety and i think a, a lot of times when people don't communicate it's not because they don't have anything to say it's just because they don't feel safe enough with you to communicate they don't know if what they say will be uh, will be all over town the next day or on your podcast or or on youtube or on your instagram or on your facebook so that's why they're not communicating with you it's not because they don't have any worries any fears or anything to say it's just because they don't feel safe enough to tell you and a lot of people are lonely a lot of people will communicate because it's not that they don't have anything to say it's just that they don't feel safe so i pray that safety 
come in communication in families and friendships and homes. Thank you, Lord, for just being here today and speaking so powerfully about how to appreciate and communicate with the people in our lives and communicate to listen. Communicate, communication, before I end, communication requires talking and listening. So, some people are talkers. So they talk, 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 but they don't really listen. They hear, but they don't listen. Here is just basically um, the language or whatever. The language is coming through your ears. But listening is taking the information and using the information in, in, to help the person in a positive way. So some people hear, but they don't listen. We all hear, but some of us don't listen. Don't listen. Don't take in that in information to adjust our behavior with the everyday angels in our lives. Um, so, listen. Don't just hear. Take in the information. Ask cl clarifying questions to understand what the, what the message is the person is conveying. And don't assume anything. Always ask. Because not everybody communicates the same way. Um, so, so a lot of miscommunication happens because you're saying something and I'm not really understanding. Or you're standing there with your, with your hands folded looking like you don't want to talk to me where you 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 are listening but your body language is saying I'm not listening to you at all I'm absolutely mad at you and a lot of communication like when somebody is saying things we're not really listening we're hearing but in our minds we're trying to come up with a defense and not really listening to what the person is saying. So listen when you communicate with the everyday people in your life. Listen when you communicate with your children. Don't just hear them. Don't just let sound come in and out of your ears. Listen, take in the information uh, and let it adjust your behavior or let it uh, permeate your uh, spirit to understand what the person is really saying. Listen to understand, not defend. Listen to understand, not defend. Bye guys. See you later. See you next week. Take care. Everyday people. Oh, and everyday people. I was listening to that this morning. It was it's a great song. Um it talks about how how we we um we all are everyday people and we all we sometimes judge each other for doing um, for doing what people do, and uh, it's really a great song. I was listening to the Nicole C. Mullen version today, so that was totally awesome. Anyway, guys, I'll see you later. <laughs>